Today's a very special day. I bathed. Just took delivery of a new tractor. Hey, this isn't a tractor channel. No one gives a shit. Get back to the knives. All right, moving on. That's not what we're here to discuss. We're talking knives. Today we're going to talk about the Essie Sensillo. Sensillo? Sensillo? Sensillo. Sen? Who the hell knows? But this is it. Not too long ago I did a video about how I would really, really, really love Essie to have a premium line. And I don't mean a new batch of different kinds of knives. I mean this knife the Izula in 3V. It's all I'm asking. Let's move on. In the meantime, I thought, why not try out the Sensillo? Kind of looks like an Izula 2 on steroids. For your viewing pleasure, a comparison shot. I do like the big hole. From the inception of this channel, I've never really wanted it to be a review channel. I wanted it to be more of a discussion channel, learn channel, see what I do with knives channel, kind of guide you through maybe some modifications. Who the hell knows? But not a review channel. Well, I seem to be getting thrust into that enviable position. Or maybe it is enviable. I don't know. We're going to see. So this is kind of morphing into... A review of this knife, but still with the same old, what do I like, what do I not like, and what did I change? And if you think I didn't change anything, you're new here because I already have changed something. My underwear. No, I'm kidding. It's not Thursday yet. Anyway. So I got this knife in the mail, and I had the choice of going with the first production run, or regular production. It is 3D. It has the texture to it. I like it. It's a good size handle. I have large to extra large hands, and I would say that is a full four-finger grip. Nice protective curve here at the front. Very Izulu 2 reminiscent. This comes in a little thicker. These are thinner. This is definitely an upgrade because unlike this, which is 1095, heat treated to about 55, 56. This A2 comes in much harder. I'm guessing it's right around 60, 61, which is lovely for A2. A2 is an awesome old school tooling steel, which a lot of you guys discount but it's still around and it's still around for a reason because it cuts like a mofo what do i like about this knife well i like the handle i like the blade shape i like the fact that that blade hangs lower than the handle awesome for doing all kinds of tasks keeps your knuckles out of the way great in the kitchen used it out in the field yesterday cut down some small saplings you know something about that big Got right in there, was able to bend the little tree over and <clears throat> force the knife into there. We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. Now, you know what? Some of you guys might be asking, how come you don't show us stuff out in the field? That's not my thing. I am not that patient. I don't have the wherewithal to take a tripod out there with me and go, well, I'm in the middle of this project and oh my gosh, you know what? I need to get that little tree out of the way so I can continue my project. Here, let me set the camera up. Let me make sure the lighting is right. Let me get the angle right. Okay, let's make everything just right. I just do stuff. If you want to see how I do things, there's a couple of videos out there of me grinding on stuff. Check it out. Otherwise, this is, this is what we're going to do. As to be expected, the overall fit and finish of the knife is perfect. I like to buy first production runs because, I don't know, sometimes in my little brain, which is encapsulated in an oversized Irish head, makes me think, you know, this is first production run, 
maybe they're spending a little bit more time on the final assembly, the fit, the finish, QC, whatever you want to call it, just so it looks that much better. They're really putting their all into it. So if I have a choice, yes, I'm getting first production run. But this came in perfect. Here's something I don't generally do is give you dimensions. I figure you can look it up. But from there to there, seven and a quarter. Width of this blade from here to here is one and three eighths. From the end of the handle to the tip, three and a half. So it's legal. I can carry this to New York City and know that I am not going to jail. It's much more substantial in the hand than the Izula, of course, and the Izula too. It's much more slicey, a lot thinner. They got that edge down nice and thin, very slicey dicey. Um, if you're really used to the Izula too, be careful the first few times that you use this. You might get yourself hurt. Now here's something that I really don't like about the knife. Kind of wish they had modeled it a little bit more on the design of the Izula 2. You have this nice finger guard, integral guard, I don't know what you want to call it, on the Izula 2. That terminates here, and it's still nice and fat steel. Then there's a notch, it's called a sharpening notch, and then the blade. For the Sensillo, we go straight into really, really pointy spot. I would like to see the same design as they have here. Nice fat spot for your finger to push against and then blade, rather than something really, I mean, that starts to get very narrow right there because it's going straight to blade. A little bit of a misstep while pushing into something or whatever, you're in for a trip to the emergency room. And if you're using this a lot and you squeeze, that starts to become irritating. This really doesn't. If we could possibly revamp this design, guys, that would be neat. Other than that, I wouldn't change a thing. I love it. Looking forward to using it a lot more. Now let's move on to the sheath. Here it is. It originally came with this as the belt clip that you can bend, get up over your belt, and you're good to go. It's a nice, inexpensive way to make a belt clip. I'm more of a small tech lock guy, so I put that on. Now, this is a pet peeve of mine, I would like to see when you're making a sheath and you're designing a sheath, and if you're going to have all of these rivets, it wouldn't be too difficult or a bad idea to maybe have the spacing of the holes so that if somebody like me wanted to put a tech lock on here, the holes line up for a tech lock application. Because then I wouldn't have to do this. I have to drill that out with my Swiss Army knife. That one fits and that's what I do. Now you might be looking at this and saying, wow, that's really favoring one side. Well, that actually comes in kind of handy. Depending on the pants that you're wearing, this belt loop can be here or here or even further back, I have found that if I put this in here, clip it down, then I can move it forward and it's in a nice position, which you couldn't do with something like this. Another thing that I changed on this, when you get your Sensillo and you go to take it out, you're going to have a difficult time. Now, sure, use your thumb. You will notice the first few times that you extract the knife, you're going to have black residue on that part of your knife. And that is because it is wearing inside the sheath. I'm sure over time that is fine, and that will make the insertion and extraction of said blade that much easier. 
I'm not that patient. I remove that rivet. What that does is that allows the kydex to separate a little bit with the knife coming out. It's still very secure, still not going anywhere. Hesse, if you're watching this, you could just forget about having that hole up there. And let's do a little uh, revamping of the spacing. Overall assessment of this knife is it is a go. I would say yes, buy it, use it, enjoy it. Maybe modify your sheath, make that a little easier. Essie, think about it, revamp that. It's not that big a deal. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. I will see you on the next one.